Hello, Internet. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Instagram. Or anywhere else this video may appear. My name is Samuel Huber from SamuelHuber.net. Samuel Huber on YouTube. Huber Family Adventures on Instagram. And also Inclusion Tube on YouTube. Um, but today we're talking on my show, which is called Heroes of Autism. I'm here with Laura uh, Hailman, who's an author, a podcaster, an autistic mom warrior. And we're going to learn about all those things and what those things are. Um, can you tell the, my audience a bit about yourself? Yes, um, I am a mom of two kids. Um, my son, uh, Skyler, is on the spectrum. He's on the more severe end of the spectrum. He is nonverbal. He's 17. Um, and I have a neurotypical daughter who will be 15 this month. Congratulations. Hopefully you can have a, some kind of birthday for her. <laughs> I know. Yes. <laughs> um, can you, what can you tell us about your podcast and why you started it? Yeah, um, I started the podcast. It's called Living the Sky Life. Um, I started that last year in September of 2019. And um, my goal really was to connect a lot of families um, with children on the spectrum or have their caregivers of someone on the spectrum. But I also wanted to focus more on the older side of the disorder. Uh, kids turning 22 and services are ending. And we are, as parents, are left with a lot of questions that are unanswered for services. Yeah. We don't really know what to do um, at that point. So I, I was hoping to find um, a lot of families that have either navigated that road before that could give some advice and tips to, to me and to other parents whose mm -hmm. children are upper teenage age. Um, and it's been great. I've had a lot of guests with um, adults on the spectrum and they they have given so much hope to me mm -hmm. with all of the things that their their young adults are doing so it's mm -hmm. great that's really wonderful and yeah that's definitely the biggest uh, question point I, I meet with my client uh, clients because I am an adult on the spectrum myself and they're w wondering how I, I did it. like I'm some kind of unicorn because I have a wife a kid <laughs> and a mortgage uh, <laughs> I'm like like every other guy I was just I met the right girl at the right time and things just kind of worked out um which leads me to my next question as i was going through your instagram i noticed this hashtag called autistic i mean autism mom where what exactly is that i just feel like um that hashtag represents everything i've done for the past 17 years of his life i mm -hmm. you know of course am always trying to find therapies and things that um, will help bring more independence for Skylar um, and medical treatments that might help him in various ways. Um, and I never give up and I never take one physician's word for, you know, any diagnosis. I, mm -hmm. I just keep pushing on. And if some therapy doesn't work, I try something else and I reach out and I'm always researching, always trying to find things that will let him live his best life and that don't harm him in any way. Um, it's hard with a nonverbal child because you don't ever know what's exactly wrong. Mm -hmm. um, if he's frustrated and banging or upset, I, I'm just kind of guessing at, you know, if he has a, a belly ache or if he has a headache or if he's hungry, it just, I really don't know. So I'm trying everything I can think of to, to gain more independence for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would independence for him look like for you and what what kind of independence do you want him to eventually have sure um feeding himself i mean he's doing pretty well with that but we still need to prepare his food and sit next to him and help him with his portions and help him with the fork and things like that um dressing himself completely independently he can do some things but some things he needs our help for um you know just having some sort of communication to be able to tell us if he's hungry, if he's tired, what he needs. We've tried, you know, pecs, we've tried the Big Mac, we've tried iPads, um, uh, you name it, we've tried it. Sign language, it just nothing seems to resonate with him. So um, mm -hmm. right now what he's pointing, I give him choices of two items, like two shirts to put on, which one he likes the best, mm -hmm. foods to eat, and he points and he, you know, chooses, he knows exactly what he wants. So we're just trying to get, give him and an, an, uh, enable him to be able to tell us in a way mm -hmm. what he what he needs. 
that would be huge independence for us. So it would take a little bit of off of our shoulders. Mm -hmm. Have you tried playing like a big choice board on his bedroom wall where he can just point to individual objects, pictures? Yeah, we haven't tried a big board. We've, um, I've hung pictures on the actual, like the door of the bathroom, like to mm -hmm. let me know he has to go to the bathroom. I've put a picture of the bathroom so mm -hmm. where he can touch it and tell us and his ABA center does that too. Mm -hmm. um, I think pictures is going to be the way to go for us. But I, I've learned that the um, original PEX pictures that were all stick figures and, you know, yeah. hand drawn objects doesn't work for him. So I took pictures of pretty much everything I could think of the mm -hmm. actual item and we're using those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because that's the big thing with especially some like your son is like, the stick figures don't look like the actual objects. And I think my problem with pecs is they don't look like the actual object because they can't relate. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about a tree, but, or a person, oh, this is a stick figure. What is that? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think like, yeah, pecs need to be more accurate depictions. So I think actual pictures are the, definitely the way to go. Um, so I'm guessing your sons, you're a big inspiration for your book. Can you tell us a bit more about the book that's about to come out? Yeah, yep, it's out for pre-order right now, and it will actually hit um, the mailboxes of everyone that pre-ordered it um, in the end of June, so just next month. But um, it's it's called Welcome to My Life, um, A Personal Parenting Journey Through Autism, and it's pretty much the life story of um, raising Skylar and all of the things that came with it, the treatments, the the various, I mean, from my pregnancy with him to the pregnancy of my daughter, um, and everything that we've done in between um, and all of the emotional things that come along with it. I'm hoping that people who have um, a child on the spectrum or they're a caregiver of someone on the spectrum, that they can relate to a lot of my emotions and a lot of what I was going through as a parent with two children, um, one on the spectrum, one not. And for people who are maybe counselors or teachers in schools, or therapists that they can read it and gain, gain a lot of insight as to what maybe the neurotypical child in your family is, is feeling and going through and having their own issues with a, a sibling on the spectrum. Um, you know, I talk a lot about my marriage, my first marriage ended in divorce. Um, mm -hmm. And my current husband is phenomenal with the kids. And um, so I talk about relationships and how that can be affected with someone with special needs. So there are a lot of people that hopefully the story will resonate with, um, mm -hmm. even if they don't specifically, you know, parent a child on the spectrum. So. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, in the beginning part of your answer about having your, going from having your son to your daughter. What, what was the, if you don't mind me asking, what was it like going from, okay, my first child, he has autism. I'm about to have my second, will she or he have autism? Like, can you go a bit into that experience, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was a nervous wreck the entire pregnancy with my daughter. Um, with my son, I did the exact same things as with my daughter during my pregnancy. I, you know, stayed away from tuna and, and mercury, and I didn't drink soft drinks. I mean, I did everything I thought correctly. And so um, being that I did everything correctly with my son, I was super panicked that I would have another child on the spectrum. And I, um, I just didn't think there was any way I was going to be able to handle two children with severe special needs. Um, it, it was, it was a stressful time. And then even her development, um, she's very neurotypical. I mean, she did everything on time. In fact, early, she talked early, she walked early, all of those things. It was, it was such a blessing seeing her develop, quote unquote, normally. However, it was also very strange because she did everything first and she's still doing things that Skylar has yet to do. Um, mm -hmm. Skylar's not potty trained. So my first attempt at potty training anyone was my second child. So everything I experienced as a parent, even hearing the word mom was so far off because I hadn't had any of that with Skylar. So it was it was tough emotionally to celebrate all of the things that she's done, but to mourn the fact that my son still hasn't done any of those things. So mm -hmm. it's it's good and bad. <laughs> I just try to see the good in it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's the hugest thing is like seeing the uh, blessing. Um, and then I think is your your daughter can be a hero to your son and like an example because 
Uh, autistic people are very visual and having her around, I'm sure motivates him. Um, what would you say to parents that are going through that situation? Like, will we have another child in the spectrum um, uh, or, or will we not? Like, how, looking back, how would you emotionally get ready for if you do or you don't have one? Yeah, I think, I mean, it definitely needs to be a unified parenting decision um, between your spouse and, and yourself. Um, if one person isn't on board, I definitely think that you should wait just because in my experience, it's just so much work that if you do end up with another child with special needs, um, it can cause a lot of animosity in the marriage and a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that, you know, you there's genetic testing you can do now. I mean, nothing can can guarantee a, a positive or a negative result with those tests during pregnancy, but there are a lot of things that you can do to kind of determine the risk. But, you know, if, if you're meant to have another child, if, if God blesses you with more children, I, I mean, I would definitely say go for it. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of podcasting friends and a lot of friends um, in my community that have only children and those children are, have special needs mm -hmm. and they wish that they had another child, whether they ended up with special needs or not, mm -hmm. to have some sort of like, kind of like you mentioned earlier, a, another role model for their child to, to aspire to and to watch do things and to play and to kind of teach them. Um, mm -hmm. They can learn probably a lot more from their sibling than they can from their parent. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to have another child. And for the parents sake, you know, I don't think it's as prevalent to have multiple children with special needs as it is to, to only have one. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it'd be nice for the parents too, to be able to go through some of those traditional rites of passage with your other children, mm -hmm. um, you know, weddings, graduations, things like that, that your special needs child may not end up doing. So, um, you know, it's, it can be a blessing all around to have more, more children, I think. That's just my opinion. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> um, so how, how'd you go about explaining to your daughter um, why uh, Skylar is the way he, he is? And how is, over the years has her, her view on him and her, and her interactions with him changed? Um, I, I started at an early age. I mean, she's very, you know, she noticed a lot of things like, why isn't he doing that? Why can't he do that? And she was great. They're two years apart and she was a great little helper. I mean, she'd even sit at a little table with me when I would do some ABA therapy with him and hand him his popcorn reward or whatever. She liked being a part of it. As she's gotten older, she has a lot of resentment right now at those teenage years. She, he's annoying. Like we, everything we do revolves around his schedule and whether he can handle a situation. Um, it, if he can't, we have to divide and conquer and I take her somewhere. Um, or my husband will take Skylar somewhere and we separate. That's, that's getting old. I mean, they're definitely not getting along very well right now, but mm. I, I feel like, and as I touched on a whole section of her in the book, um, I know that she will always be his biggest cheerleader mm. and she learned vast amounts of empathy as a, as a child just seeing, you know, she cannot tolerate anybody looking at him wrong or saying anything about him. I mean, she is the first to jump to his defense, but, um, you know, they have their typical sibling, <laughs> sibling right. rivalries when it comes to things. In a way you got your right of passage. One of your rights of passage with your children is like children, you know, you fought, you fight with your siblings. Yeah. Um, so you did get a sense of normalcy with Skylar and your daughter. So uh, I, like, I think that's one of the huge things I tell parents to look for is like victory is like, okay, they didn't have the typical relationship with each other, but like, it, you know, you're t it's teaching your daughter to be a much stronger person and more tolerant and accepting of other uh, people's differences. And I'm where most teen girls are like, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and yeah. I think that's a huge blessing. And, and, that, and that's the way to look at, especially lower functioning autistic people is that they teach uh, so much about enjoying the simple things and accomplishing uh, just the simple tasks that we, most of most people that are neurotypical take for granted. Yeah, I think one of my biggest concerns, though, for the future is um, that she automatically assumes that it's her responsibility to care for him and to manage his trust and to, you know, just take care of him when I'm no longer around. Mm -hmm. And I hate that that burden is 
placed on her and that she's placed it on herself. Um, and I'm trying to put every single thing in place to ensure that, you know, other people can care for him and that she's not fully responsible because she would likely have a spouse and a family and everything of her own. And I just, mm -hmm. I, that worries me and keeps me up at night thinking about, you know, just his future and when I'm not here, what that's going to look like. So. Yeah. And I think that, that, that preaches to one of the big uh, organizations that I'm involved in called inclusion festival, which is a festival geared for, for autistic people. Um, so the mm -hmm. music turned down lower uh, volume and they have like sensory areas and calm down areas and a bunch of like fun community based things. And, um, and that's the one thing I encourage a lot of parents out there, like form a community with each other so that uh, it's a council of parents, a tribe to help take care of our children. So it won't all be on my daughter. It'll be this whole community that's looking out for Skylar. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's great. And that's one thing I, I, I think that, you know, if she's like, oh, am I going to be all by myself? Like, encourage her to reach out to the autism community because I know as you as a mom, probably as soon as you hear the newest trend in autism, you're like, oh, can I put that in his life? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There have definitely been things that I've tried that I'm like, oh, I probably knew that this would be a zero result, but mm -hmm. had to try it. As long as it does no harm to him, I'm always kind of game to, to try anything. So, yeah. Um, that being said, how has your perspective on autism changed over the years? And um, if you could change one thing about how the world looks at autism, what would that be and why? Um, I don't know if my perspective has changed. I've learned a lot over the years. Obviously, when he was first diagnosed at the age of three, there really wasn't, I mean, there was very little research done. Um, we didn't have uh, Facebook or I think it, I don't think Facebook was out then. Um, Google was kind of limited. I don't even know if that was available. So, um, that's evolved so much. There are so many resources. There are so many bloggers and podcasters and YouTube channels and all of these things that everyone like you are doing, um, that's mm -hmm. really helped. Um, and I think that travels into the community too. It's helped bring awareness, um, mm -hmm. to autism that, there is not a look of autism. I think that's one of the most annoying things that I've heard over the years is people saying, you know, if he's acting up or something and they're like, you know, I, he doesn't look disabled. I don't really, that is so offensive. I mean, I just, I, that is one thing that I hope that people have learned through all of this publicity around autism that's heightened is that there isn't a look, not every child with autism is the same. It's a spectrum for a reason. And there are some kids who are savants in things, but just because my child had, has autism doesn't mean he's a classical pianist that should, you know, mm -hmm. go on tour. Uh, he, you know, that's not a skill that he has. He's not a savant in anything. He has his own areas of, of strength and he has taught us a lot about patience and perseverance. That's for sure. He's a savant of patience. Yeah. <laughs> God. He has no patience, actually. <laughs> I don't think well, that he's as a teacher, like he's a good yeah. teacher. Yes, yes, for sure. I've definitely uh, had to calm my perfectionism and my patience over the years. <laughs> so, hmm. so how important is like we we talk a lot about our children on the spectrum, but we often ignore you, the parents, um, which leaves you to need, the need to take care of yourself. How important is self care when you have a special need child like Skylar? It's very, very, very important, um, especially during this quarantine. Um, luckily, at Christmas time, we bought a Peloton. So my husband and I are on it every single day. We sync our calendars to make sure that, you know, we can get our workout time in, whatever it is, going for a run, something. Um, I need that space, and I know he does too. We need to get out of this environment um, and caring for his every single need every day. Uh, mm -hmm. It is overwhelming, and there are plenty of sleepless nights because he doesn't sleep that great. We mm -hmm. were up at four o'clock this morning, um, and mm -hmm. if if we don't take the time, even as tired as we are to do it, it builds up in me anyway. It builds up like this just overwhelming frustration, and I almost feel angry. Like I just have to release it, and working out for me has been the way to do that. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah, uh, de definitely. Like, 
you know, some form of movement, even if it's just lifting your laundry up and down the stairs a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, you, so your second hu husband came into the picture. I just thought of this question. Um, how did you explain uh, Skylar to him? And for all the parents that are, are bringing in a step parent into a situation like yours, like mm -hmm. how did you go about explaining to him and, and helping him adjust to uh, that life? Um, you know, it's, it's a divine intervention. I always say, um, when Josh, my husband came into our lives, because I really didn't have to explain a lot other than, you know, how to diaper change and how to, you know, do some of these things because, um, he had no children of his, of his own biologically. So, um, he had never changed pull-ups before or any of that stuff. But when I met him, I mean, I'm always very clear to anyone that I dated or anything that, um, I was a package deal that I had two children and I explained, you know, everything about autism to the best of my ability. Um, and I took quite a bit of time before I introduced him to, um, Kendall and Skylar, my kids and, um, <laughs> Skylar actually, I think won him over day one. As soon as uh, Josh came over for dinner, Skylar went right to the door and grabbed his hand because he doesn't know a stranger and, um, mm -hmm. care, you know, took his hand and guided him to the basement where all of his toys were. Mm -hmm. And they just bonded instantly. Their bond today is closer than my bond with Skylar. It really is. Mm -hmm. He will do anything Josh asks him to do. Um, whereas I, I ask him and he just kind of looks the other way. <laughs> but, um, Typical and Josh people. actually, yeah, <laughs> Josh actually adopted Skylar, um, uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Um, so he is officially his father. So that's yep. been really neat to see because they, they, their bond is just beautiful. So. Mm -hmm. He is all in. Uh, what would you say to uh, someone who, who's uh, a parent who's just entering it, like, and they're really like struggling to understand uh, autism? You know, have only heard like a brief, like, sixty-minute spew about it. Um, how, you know, you know, how, you know, would they go about really learning to understand it? Is it a, you mean a parent who is um, coming into a family as a step parent or? Yeah, like if Josh had like, was not as awesome as he is, like <laughs> had, had, had no idea what autism is and like really found like uh, the aggressive behavior is really challenging, mm -hmm. um, but they still wanted to make it work and really learn how to uh, bond with a child like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think um, it, it's great if, if someone is, uh, you know, continuing to want to make it work. I think for me, I, if, if it would have been that situation for us and, um, I could see that, that Josh was overwhelmed or, um, that he just wasn't bonding with the kids, you know, for the sake of my children, again, because we're a package deal mm -hmm. as much as I really liked Josh, I would have probably had to move on. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't know that putting your kids in a situation like that with someone who is learning to learning to kind of handle it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put my kids in a situation with someone that just has, has to learn how to deal with autism. Mm -hmm. I, I want them to just kind of look past the autism. And that's one of the things that Josh has always done is he, every situation I'm sometimes the one who will say, I don't know if we should go here or do this because I think it's going to really upset Skylar. And he's like, listen, we'll just go. And if he gets upset, we'll drive separate. And then you can stay with Kendall and I'll take him and we'll go walking or something. He's always the first to offer the let's try it. And then we'll, I'll, I'll take him out of the situation or we'll come up with a different plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think people should, I guess, speaking from a female perspective, um, if you're dating someone or looking for someone, you want someone that's all in no matter what like we'll figure it out don't worry about it instead of having to learn to deal with it i just don't know that that would work for me personally because mm -hmm. i think it would just present so many challenges in the relationship and right. you would hate to have your kids feel like they're the blame they're the reason that your relationship with that person didn't work so yeah so it sounds like the most important thing for a step parent coming in is to see the child's humanity not the autism absolutely yeah, treat them just like you would treat the neurotypical children in the family if there are those. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Excellent. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to uh, the audience before I let you go? 
Um, no, other than uh, take a listen to the podcast, <laughs> Living the Sky Life, and um, go out to Amazon and pre-order my book. Um, I really hope that it makes a difference in some lives. Um, so um, I appreciate the, the time and, and talking to you, and I'm looking forward to having you on my podcast. Yeah, next week, folks, I'm going to be on her podcast. So yeah. tune on in. Um, you can, how can people get in contact with you if they want to listen to your podcast or talk to you about uh, any, anything autism related? Yeah, um, the podcast um, is on Apple. Again, it's Living the Sky Life. Um, it's on Apple, Spotify, and Google Play. And on every episode, I link um, my Instagram, my Facebook, and my email accounts. Um, so you can reach out to me at any of those um, and let me know what I can help with. I'll do my best from a parent perspective. I'm no therapist by any stretch. <laughs> I have no ABA training. So, um, but other than that, I can just share my experience with you. Yeah. And that's a huge thing. Part of here as well, doesn't share any experience because we spend so much time with the experts. Um, and I think hearing your story and other stories, it's all about bringing some humanity to the whole autism situation that's going around the world because we ain't going mm -hmm. anywhere. Um, so <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing for, for keep writing your books and keep sharing because it's all about humanity, not a disorder. Absolutely. Acceptance is key, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. All right. Um, thank you for coming on our show. All right, folks. Yeah. Until next time, this is Sam Peebers signing off.